Hey y'all, um, out here with my friend uh, Scott today, and he's got a 55 Chevy Gasser, tilt front end, just the car looks like it fell out of the 60s. Of course, it's, you know, it's been done to today's level and used today's type of parts, but uh, Scotty Troutman did the paint job on it, so there's a lot of my buddies involved in it, but it's a very, very cool car. I've never been able to shoot a Gasser. I've seen several of them, but I've never got a chance to shoot one, so I'm excited about bringing this car to you today. So anyways, let me run Scott down and uh, we'll take a look at the thing. Scott, how are you, brother? Good, man. Good, Scotty. How are you? Not too bad. Tell me a little bit about this high ride. Uh, 55 Chevrolet Gasser, two-door sedan, some people might call it. Uh, uh, built frame off, you know, took the frame, sandblasted the body. Right. Uh, built the frame, hot rodded it up. Uh, as you said in the introduction there, we, we've tried to incorporate as much old-school technology, or much as old-school, and, and then bringing a, just a flare of new stuff to it, like in the fuel system, trying to hide as much of it as we can. Oh, I got you. And then, but try to incorporate as much old-school, and, and like a, uh, talk about Magneto on this car instead of an M traditional, what, what people call now a traditional MSD box. Right. Now it's got a true Magneto in it. A uh, ton of RAM, two fours, but the f two fours have been run went through, and they act more like a modern day carburetor than they what they would have in the 60s. Right. So it's a little bit different. Uh, like I said, it's uh, designed to be a, a gasser car, and that's what it is. Just a pure hot rod. Right. But if there was a better way of doing it, yet staying true to the theme. Absolutely. That's what y'all did. Yeah, you want to stay th true to the hot rod feel of the car because it's what it's supposed to be, just a pure hot rod. Right. And had you had this been something you'd thought about for a long time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, took about five years of planning. You know, this is what I wanted to do, and visions, and looking at other cars at at Charlotte's and the places like that, and seeing cars, and saying, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want to build. So I started collecting parts for about five years. Uh, then uh, about an eighteen month process to do to build the car once I had been collecting all my parts. Well, that's not bad. Now is it uh, is it all steel car? No, no, sir. It's a it's a tilt front end, fiberglass tilt front end, like you would see. Uh, in a lot of gasser cars, it's a fiberglass door car, no window mechanisms whatsoever. This has got two pop-in windows. Uh, if, if your viewers are familiar, which a lot of the gasser guys are going to be familiar with a two-lane black top car, this would be a sister top car to that car. Uh, so it's got sliding windows, plexiglass sliding windows that will pop in. I don't have pretty day today, so I don't have them in. Right. And then we've got, uh, but the rest of the hull of the car, you know, your quarter panels and your top are full metal, full metal floors, fiberglass trunk lid plexiglass rear windows, quarter windows, and then uh, that are stationary, which a, a 150 car had that back in the day. And then you got a regular glass front and regular glass rear. Cool. And then you, I mean, obviously you don't run no bumpers on the front of nope. it. No, gassers, you know, no torsion have bumpers. You've seen a lot of gassers that would have a, uh, a little keg out front right, for like right. a Hilburn type car. Right. We had Hilburn on this motor at one point tried it and couldn't really get where we wanted to be so we took the Hilburn injection back off and put the two fours back on and still going to school on the Hilburns. Now those are old school four barrels? Uh, yeah these are old school uh, the Holly 660s is what they would be. Uh, Holly uh, that's an old drag racing carburetor don't have any no vacuum secondary stuff and no mechanical linkage for for chokes whatsoever so they're just a, a pure race hot rod. He didn't build this is this is true of a gas or old race cars that's, a, that's all it is that's what you set out to do this is a pure hot rod i mean it's you know like i told you it's a no no uh windshield wiper motors no heater core no heaters no radio no nothing just a pure hot rod wow but yet you drive it all over everywhere no kidding yeah so that's straight legal yeah oh yeah absolutely mm. straight legal i've had uh, several officers pull me over and most of the time, uh, they've pulled me over and said, hey, we just stopped you to be able to look at the car. Check it out, right? Yeah, we, want, we like it. We want to see it. Boy, that's a beautiful dash in there. Yeah. Sweet. I mean, I like to set and finish, don't get me wrong, but well, that's some shiny yeah. black paint yeah. in there. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that was Scotty's idea to put the white on there and put the white in the center. And again, you know, like the mechanical tack, that's a throwback to the old days. You don't see very many mechanical tacks anymore. Right. Um uh, and, and again, like I said, it's got a magneto in it. The magneto actually has a rev limiter like what a lot of MSD guys would have today. You know, we're, you know, at 7,300, it'll sit there and start popping. popping. Yeah. And what are you running, a four speed or a five speed? Four speed. It's a, what's it called, a G4 South four speed with a 433 nine inch Ford all Moser, 35 spine all Moser. See, that's where we incorporated the new technology. It's a, 
It's an all Moser, 35 spline, big axles. It's a still, a, it's a spooled rear end. Now that's a little aggravating sometimes when you're trying to turn, you know, radiuses. But it's a spooled rear end and then a, you know, G4 South four speed, which is traditionally that would have been a Muncie four speed. I got you. Instead of a G4 South. Now you just said a spooled rear end. Does that mean that it's low up. tires? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, locked yeah. straight up. It's really positive track. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. when you get caught out in the rain, it can get a little uh, squirrely. A little squirrely. I would think. Turning corners if you don't watch out. It's a little jerky when you make yeah. turn tight turns in it. Yeah. So if you notice, the gas tank lid would have been in this car right, right. in this quarter panel. We've, it's not there. We've got an air motive, all air motive, 22 gallon fuel cell with an air motive sum, uh, submerged uh, sump pump in the trunk. In the trunk. So you don't see it, you don't really know it's there. Right. But it's a it's a it's a big fuel system to power high high horse cars. Right. And then you then you just don't even have hinges or anything. You just got no tilt. It's a but a pin on what you call a pin on trunk lid, which was notorious for back in the day. Gas right. is not rods. Right. Notoriously, uh, pin on, a lot of pin on stuff. Wow, dude. Roll bar in it. It's got uh, the roll bar is actually for looks and function. I mean, it, right. it's, it's in there to looks, but it's actually everywhere that the roll bar's in there, it hits the frame. Okay. So it's actually functional. Right. I mean, it's a real, it's a real built into the car when we built the car. That was one of the features that you had to have and you made it work and all that. It yeah. Just, yeah, it just works. Yeah. yeah. But it's just not for show. It's designed. Right. To, and the car actually thinks it's a, a lot of guys that are going to watch your program are going to know racing technology. Well, this car, it's on leaf springs. And if you look at it, it's on, shows leaf springs, but it's right. on floaters. And it's, the car actually thinks it's a four bar car. Oh, wow. So it's got coil over helpers to help it to help it up a little bit, but the car thinks it's a four bar because it's got floaters on it. And then it's got, uh, you, if you come around to the other side of the wheel, wheel you'll see the trailing arms, the what you call ladder bars back in the day. Oh yeah. See those ladder bars under there? Right. See, that's, that's an old school effect. Right. So you see the big ladder bars come up and then all of a sudden, it, it, like I said, the car thinks it's a four bar car, but if you, if you just initially look at it, you go, man, it's a leaf spring ladder bar car. Right, so a little bit different. Yeah, just a little few tricks you've thrown in there. Lot, you know, we put a lot of thought into it. You know how it was going to affect and what we were doing, and you know to keep the to keep the theme. The car, the motor set back into the car six and a half inches. So when I pop the hood, yeah. guys that are familiar with the, the 55 stuff will they'll see that right off. Let's see under that hood. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of work to get one this simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's just cool, isn't it? Oh, and wow. see, uh, see, my carburetors are. We've cut, actually, cut all the way into the window. The motor set back six and a half inches, and the motor would never set back that far in a, in a no. normal car. And you see how the headers are right against the firewall. Yeah, you see how that intake's right against the firewall yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. Used all the room you had. Yeah. Set everything back again. Magneto. Uh, real mag. <coughs> it's a 427 started out its life as a 427 then got built up to a 496 aluminum headed 496 uh, RW race engines out of Severable uh, it's been on the dyno a couple different times and what are you getting out of it uh, it's a 700 horse motor yeah. right you know 700 it's uh, um, there's some stuff that we would do but we lose some streetability it's a again like I said it's a 496 all solid roller 730 730 solid roller motor right it's all it won't never give up, and this motor turns. Uh, we I turn it all the time, about 7,300. So Holy it, smoke! Yeah, for wow. a big block, it's really moving. Yeah, that is a lot, isn't it? That's what it's chipped on 7,300. So it'll bump the chip. It's, uh, when we ride in it, uh, there's a good chance we'll bump the chip because it'll it just gets up on it so quick. Right. That you'll that you take a chance on bumping the chip, but it's all right. Yeah, that's what it's there for, right? That's a build. Is a, a friend of mine told me that uh, his name's uh, Tom Wittenberger. He was like I was telling you, he's in the movie Two Lane Blacktop. And uh, a lot of guys will know the movie Two Lane Blacktop. Uh, this car was kind of a sister built clone of the Two Lane Blacktop car uh, with our flare on it. But uh, he told me that the proportion of hot rod is directly related to how much you drive it versus how much you work on it. Right. So you know how good a hot rod right. you got. If you're only driving it for about 30 minutes and working on it for three days, right. that's a good hot that's rod. That's a good hot rod, right. <laughs> wow. Again, nice. straight axle front end, four bar front end, which is which is pretty unique. You don't see a lot of cars on the street. You see a lot of straight axles with uh, leafs. Right. A lot of leafs right, that'll right, pick right. up here. Yeah, I was going to ask here. you about that. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a four bar car, which is tons of adjustability on tracking, tracking, and one thing or another. Which it's a uh, again the two lane blacktop car or the American Graffiti car are the same car. Right. 
the same. It was built the exact same way. Richard Ruth built that, that built that car. Oh, cool. Have you done a lot of hot rods? Have you built a lot? This is the first one that we built like this. Yeah, first one that I built. Again, wow. you know, Scotty Troutman painted it, and we come up. So he was the one that came up with the idea. Hey, let's paint this firewall white, right. which that turned out neat. And uh, the flat black was just supposed to be just again back to primer just a pure yeah. hot rod, right, you know, right. primer, something that you would have seen at your drag strip. In between 60, let's say, and 69, you would have went to the drag strip, you'd have seen this car. You've seen a lot of them, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, very cool. The interior was done over Maribel, Tennessee, uh, rolling, you know, rolling pleat, which back in the day, a lot of guys like that rolling pleat. You use somebody right. when you've done the, the, the pleated, so a uh, little bit different. Yeah. No, you hit it, brother. Yeah. I mean, you did a really nice job, like I said, I'm making a base hot rod. That's yeah. what you wanted. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what you wanted. Yeah, just a pure hot rod. You wanted to be able to drive it to the to the shows and the cruises, but you yep. wanted it to represent what oh, a hot rod would have back then. Well, and people, as you well know, we're about. I tell you what, it, uh, it's just a it's a it's a tension getter. People just like it. It's noisy. It's loud. It's hateful. It's yeah. It, but it's just a it's just a hot rod, and that's what that's exactly what I wanted to build. Cool. Man, can we take a ride in it? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, folks. We're gonna shut this down. And take a ride in this thing. It's got seat belts, right? Yes, sir. All right. One double check. I've been forewarned. Okay. I told I told people I said I'm usually not worried about a ride along because these cars I ride in are worth more than I am. So yeah. you know. Yeah, this one might have some some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this shut down. We'll be back with a ride in this thing, folks. See ya.